Hi, we're here at the Whitney Museum of American Art and speaking with curator Laura Phipps about the exhibition, Jean Quick to See Smith Memory Map. Thanks so much for talking with us today. Thank you for being here. I'm so excited you all are here. Great. Um, so we're really excited to be in New York um, to see this amazing exhibit. Um, but to begin with, can you just provide us a brief introduction to Smith and then also what Memory Map encompasses? Absolutely. So Jean Quick to See Smith um, is an artist an activist, a curator, an educator. Um, she's been working for nearly 50 years. All of these things are a part of um, not only the way she lives her life, but also her artistic practice. And so the exhibition memory map is really a retrospective, the largest and most comprehensive retrospective of her work to date. And it includes prints, drawings, paintings, sculpture, and ephemera, and really aims to tell a holistic view of just this incredible artist's practice, her position in the world, and some of the stories that are most important to her. Smith is a citizen of the Confederated Salish and Kootenai Nation. She was born on the St. Ignatius Mission in Montana and grew up between Montana and the Pacific Northwest. She was raised by her father, who was a horse trader, so they had a fairly itinerant um, childhood and since 1976 she's been living in Corrales, New Mexico just outside Albuquerque. What about Smith's work drew you as a curator and then can you share a little bit about the working relationship you had with her building this exhibition? Absolutely. Well we at the Whitney are incredibly lucky um, to have more than a dozen examples of Smith's work in our collection and over my time at the Whitney um, I've gotten to know a number of her large-scale prints that are in the collection as well as a really wonderful painting from the 1990s so um, I had this sort of familiarity with Smith's work really through our collection but it was actually through meeting her um, and talking about the works in the collection and sort of understanding a little bit more about her practice and really her generosity of spirit um, that got me really excited about working with Smith. I will also say that she has been so influential on now generations of younger indigenous artists. She's incredibly supportive of those that are coming up after her and my experience at the museum has been working really closely with emerging artists throughout my time here and so those are the conversations I sort of started when I was thinking about the way that the Whitney could better understand and engage with indigenous art and artists and the name that I heard over and over again from these younger artists was Jean Quick to see Smith so it felt really important to recognize that influence and to really um, showcase her career. Kind of getting back to like the theme or the title of the exhibition like there's a work called State Names Map One from 2000 that feature um, one of the versions of Smith's United States maps. So can you talk a little bit about why maps are so integral to her art making? Sure. So interestingly, Smith has been thinking about and really exploring maps from some of her earliest work. The earliest works in the show are from the 70s, some even from when she was in undergraduate and graduate school, and some of the earliest pastels she talks about as being inhabited landscapes and talks about them as being sort of memory maps, but you wouldn't necessarily identify them as such when you see them. They have um, you know, large swaths of color, more abstracted forms, but she was really thinking about maps not as a sort of geopolitical understanding of space, but actually about, about um, creating sort of the essence of place, the memory of place, the things that are ultimately sort of important to her and to others about a place. And so the maps are really there from the beginning, but in this sort of more conceptual maybe way of thinking about mapping, she started incorporating the more recognizable map of the United States really um, in 1992 with her first map, Indian map. And, you know, she's a student of art history, uh, grew up, you know, studying throughout the 60s and 70s, so it was like intimately familiar with the artists that were being shown at the time, being written about. So seeing Jasper Johns and his way of approaching the map and the flag um, really sort of sparked something in Smith, thinking about what does it mean for 
this person to use this form and what would it mean for me to use this form and so her maps though she's using sort of the the recognizable form and often including you know these borders she's really commenting on how arbitrary these borders are what the sort of geopolitical sort of understanding of borders might mean for people um, and often adding you know her own sort of lived experience of place into the maps for audiences that maybe aren't familiar with Smith's work, like what artworks in the exhibition would you like say is a must see that people people should for sure make sure to spend time with. Sure, well this has changed over the course of just being in the show actually, but one of the biggest surprises um, of the exhibition is actually the work that's at the very front of the show um, that opens sort of the first gallery. It's called Indian Madonna Enthroned. And it's a work that Smith made in 1974. She was actually finishing her undergrad degree. She had a, a bit of a circuitous route to becoming an artist and finishing her education. So, so she wasn't like a 19 year old undergrad. Uh, she had a lot of lived experience and I think you see that in the maturity of her work from that time. But this Madonna um, is a sculpture. It, it doesn't necessarily look like a lot of her other work, which I think is so interesting because in reality, that work contains all of sort of the ideas and the messages and the things that she's thinking about for the next almost 50 years of her career. And just to sort of describe it a little, Smith was, you know, had been in school, was studying and learning about the Italian Renaissance and Madonnas. She was also spending time in New York museums at the time. She was living in Massachusetts and remembers specifically going to MoMA and seeing Marisol and thinking about the way that Marisol was considering the figure and then coming actually to the Whitney um, and seeing a work installed by the um, artist Edward Keenholz that included um, this seated woman and you know really um, Keenholz was adding all of the, these symbols that meant something to him and was telling a story so she came back to her studio with these contemporary practices in mind as well as this art history that she was learning about and she set out to make her own Madonna that contained um, symbols that were important to her so the woman has um, corn in the place of the heart her hands are made from bird feathers and so she's really thinking about the thing that I think carries through in all of the work, which is this non-hierarchical connection between people, plants, and animals, and how that interconnectedness um, just has to sort of carry through your understanding of how to be in the world, how to help take care of each other, um, plants, animals, people. Yeah, it is. It's an amazing work. I've never seen it. It was, <laughs> it was so great. It was a um, great surprise. Um, it, I had only ever seen it in installation shots and sort of the background. It lived in her home for years, so she said her cat would lay on the woman's oh, lap. Wow. Um, and then there it was, like up in storage in New Mexico. I'm like, what is that? <laughs> um, so it's really great to see the Indian Madonna sort of opening up the show and really sort of giving a hint of all of the things that are to come, I think, in the work. So another big aspect of her work is collaboration. And for example, um, the piece that we're sitting in front of, she um, created with her son, um, Neil Ambrose Smith. Um, can you talk about a little bit more about how collaboration plays into her art making practice? Sure, well I think um, on one hand, collaboration was sort of born of necessity. Um, you can see from some of the early work, they're quite ambitious and large and include objects, um, whether it's you know a shelf with plastic baskets or spoons attached and so she needed help <laughs> to figure out how to do this and help came in the form of the people that were closest to her, her family. So you see often on many of the labels the fabrication credits for her husband, Andy Ambrose or her son, Neil Ambrose Smith. But I think that collaboration just as a concept is incredibly important to her and that it's about you know everyone sort of working together to use the skills that she has and she talks about you know her son Neil who is a, an incredible artist himself she talks about him as her teacher also that relationship is one of sort of reciprocity that we teach each other I think the other place that collaboration is really important in her work is through her print practice um, she has a really prolific print practice and has printed in shops all over the country, taught workshops as well, and I, that is just inherently a collaborative process. You work with a master printer, you sort of figure out what you can do, um, and so that's another place it really comes through. And then outside of her artistic practice, her curatorial practice is highly collaborative, um, always bringing um, artists, other thinkers, writers along.
So for this exhibition, did you feel like it was more of a collaborative process rather than like you just working as a curator, kind of thinking about things yourself? Oh, absolutely. I mean, Smith was an incredible partner in this process. Um, from the very beginning, we started our work together, really traveling together, um, being in the Pacific Northwest, seeing, um, seeing a lot of her work, but also seeing the places that meant a lot to her to sort of really better understand where this work was coming from. And one of the amazing um, things for me as a curator is that it hasn't been just about learning from Smith and the objects, but it's been about learning about the relationships that she has formed and built and how that work happens. So she has an incredibly wide net of friends and supporters and collaborators, um, indigenous artists and writers and curators. I've just been so lucky to be able to meet all of these folks and sort of understand how um, these relationships grow and how important they really are to to the display of work, to the understanding of American history, um, Native American history, of course, um, an important part of that. So the exhibition will also be traveling to the modern in Fort Worth. Um, did you always envision um, the exhibition being a traveling exhibition and will it be going anywhere besides New York and Texas? Yes, yeah, since the very beginning of sort of um, planning this exhibition, it was really important to both Smith and I that it would reach as broad an audience as possible. And obviously New York is a great place to start. We have an incredibly diverse audience here at the Whitney, but we wanted to sort of see it across the country as well. So um, after the run at the Whitney in New York, it'll travel to the Modern in Fort Worth, which I think will be not only just a beautiful place for the work, but also um, a really interesting context for conversation and then it will travel to the Seattle Art Museum uh, in Washington State after that. And we're just really thrilled that there are these really different contexts for people to see and think about Smith's work. I think the really wonderful thing about this exhibition is that there are a number of different registers in which you can experience it. So there are you know, some really tough political conversations to be had. There are some overlooked histories to better understand in the work, and those are incredibly important to Smith that those um, stories are told, that these questions are asked. And there's also um, just the wide variety of medium and the um, facility that Smith has with paint and with printmaking and through her drawings. So you can sort of um, experience the work on all these different levels, and I think that's one really exciting thing about just the experience of the exhibition itself. At the symposium, it was actually talked about quite a bit how the um, Whitney is planning to include more indigenous voices in your exhibition plans. Can you talk a little bit about what we can look forward to seeing at the Whitney in the future? Sure, I think there are um, some really concrete plans around um, the presentation of art. Um, Next week, we'll um, be opening an exhibition with the Santa Clara Pueblo artist Rose B. Simpson of large-scale sculptures out on our terrace. Actually, a unplanned but really happy accident that Smith's show and Simpson's show will be sort of in dialogue in space as well. And then beyond sort of presenting art, I think that there's um, a bigger conversation about um, how it is that we um, share space, um, open up conversations, allow more indigenous voices and perspectives to really be fully integrated in the way that we think about, about not only our exhibition planning, um, not only our public programs, but really our sort of thinking about the full experience of um, being in the museum, being a museum that's located um, on native land in Lenape Hoking, and how these things can sort of um, filter into our thinking about um, our institutional presence. Find all of our videos and sign up for our newsletter at artthisweek.com. Follow us on Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter.